That interview there, NDP MP Leah Gazan tabled that bill yesterday, calling for an amendment to the criminal code to criminalize the downplaying or denying of the harms of residential schools in Canada. Leah Gazan joins me in studio right now. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. First question to you, you heard the minister right there, his response about whether or not he would be supportive of it. How did you feel about how he responded? Well, I think uh, the issue is that, uh, you know, we need to deal uh, with uh, the rise of residential school denialism that has occurred since the discovery uh, of the unmarked uh, graves. Mm. Uh, you know, although he seems personally, uh, I, you know, a interested in looking at it. Uh, you know, this government has failed at every step. Uh, we are 10 years out from the final report of the National mm -hmm. Inquiry, uh, from the uh, of National Inquiry, uh, the Truth and Reconciliation yeah. Report. Uh, and they barely moved on many of the calls uh, to action. Uh, you know, and in the midst of this, we see a rise in denialism uh, 10 years out. Do we want to go back 10 years? 10 years uh, since survivors came forward sharing their stories. We need to protect their stories. We need to protect uh, survivors, families and communities. This private member's bill is personal for you. Tell me why. Well, you know, certainly, uh, you know, my family has been uh, impacted by residential school. My partner uh, has been impacted uh, in residential school. I can't think of anything more violent mm -hmm. than denying somebody's residential school uh, history. What happened in residential school, as we know, in 2023, uh, all MPs unanimously supported a motion I put forward recognizing what happened in residential school as an act of genocide, uh, according to, as it is defined, in fact, under the UN uh, Article 2 UN Convention on Genocide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing to acknowledge that. It's another thing to act on it. Survivors, families, and communities uh, are constantly being victimized by this uh, growth in residential school uh, denialism. We have to protect survivors and their stories. And also for you and, you know, your heritage as well, if I'm not mistaken, your mother was a Chinese and Lakota woman. Your father also survived the Holocaust. Yeah, so basically that's exactly what my bill proposes to do, is to add to Section 319 of the Criminal Code, which recognizes uh, Holocaust denial is a hate crime, residential school denial. And I, and I can tell you, as somebody who has history in two parts of the world, mm -hmm. uh, my father being the only child that survived, five, to, five uh, family members in total after the Holocaust, having that acknowledged that it is not acceptable to question that side of my history uh, is critical. Uh, you know, back in the day, Jim Keekstra in Alberta, uh, an Alberta teacher, teaching Holocaust denial in schools, uh, was punished uh, for that kind of misinformation, that hurtful misinformation. All I'm asking is to amend the criminal code to include Indigenous people. We recognized it unanimously in the House as a genocide. Mm -hmm. How is this government going to truly act to protect truth and the story of survivors. We cannot reconcile in this country unless we protect the truth. Are you concerned that private members' bills rarely passed? They rarely pass. Are you concerned about this one and that it won't have the full support? Well, uh, you know, that's up to, to the uh, Liberal government. I mean, when Trudeau was elected in 2015, he said the most important relationship is with Indigenous people yet, we are now in 2024. We still have water boil advisories. They barely moved on the calls for justice of the National Inquiry into murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls. They barely uh, moved on the TRC calls to action. Uh, this is a call for them to act. This is a call for them to act. 
and demonstrate if they are truly committed to reconciling uh, in this country. And that starts with protecting the folks that gifted uh, this country towards a path of reconciliation. And that is survivors, first and foremost, mm -hmm. family members and community. So I call on the minister and all members of parliament, certainly on the government side, uh, to act. Now, the Conservatives I'm concerned about. I mean, we have a leader of the Conservative Party that is meeting with think tanks like Frontier Centre that uh, have published articles denying residential school, downplaying uh, residential school, uh, ex uh, uh, the, the experiences in residential school, fundraising with Frontier Centre. But has he specifically come out and said it? I mean, I know that there, you have said in other interviews that there are some politicians that have denied it. And the example that is cited is the former Conservative Senator Lynn Bayak, uh, who resigned in 2021 after defending some aspects of the residential school system. But Mr. Polyev specifically and the members of, of his caucus right now, have they said anything that makes you think that they are in this realm of denialism? Because at, at this point, I have not. Well, uh, what I can uh, say is that, uh, you know, the current leader of, of the uh, Conservative Party, uh, Pierre Parlia, is on record, uh, you know, in the past, uh, in ministerial role, roles, uh, saying that, you know, uh, f uh, uh, speaking out against uh, the settlement, uh, the residential school settlement, uh, saying we just, you know, need to get back to work. I mean, those kind of cold and callous comments. And I, and I do think we need to question why somebody who wants to uh, become the next prime minister, who has the goal of that, why he would choose to meet with think tanks and fundraise with think tanks that are on the, the record as residential school denialists. And, and you've uh, seen him meet with them or you, you have the proof no, of he's, them? No, yeah, he's, he's had fundraisers uh, and it's on, on record. It was public, it was in the news, uh, with uh, Frontier Centre. That concerns me, uh, certainly in terms of his relationship with Indigenous peoples uh, in this country, uh, if he's truly uh, willing to reconcile with Indigenous peoples. Now, I know where the Liberals are at. Uh, we're still, uh, they're still patting on themselves on the back uh, about incremental justice uh, when it comes to wa water boil advisories, like this should be an accomplishment, like not every person that lives in Canada should have clean water. So I'm used to that behavior. Mm -hmm. But I also am concerned about behaviors and comments that I've heard in the House uh, downplaying residential schools, uh, downplaying the damage that it caused, uh, especially as elected officials. Uh, I'm calling everybody in the House. I'm calling on all members of Parliament to do better uh, and to do the right thing and help push this bill forward. Uh, and just to be clear, when you say you've heard these, uh, um, these calls of, of downplaying it, from specific people, or, yeah. or is there something that, that you would like to bring up as an example? Yeah, certainly Aaron O'Toole uh, in the... I mean, he's the, uh, the former, former leader. The former he, leader. He's no of longer the part of the party. Yeah, right. Uh, the former leader of the Conservative Party uh, was on record, and certainly it was the, in the news. He apologized mm -hmm. uh, about his uh, comments downplaying and minimizing the harms and genocide that happened uh, in residential uh, school. I, I've mentioned Lynn uh, uh, Bayak. Right. Uh, and then, you know, other comments, if you look in the Hansard, uh, from other members of Parliament, uh, downplaying uh, the harms uh, of residential school, trying to minimize uh, what, what, what has happened in the schools. There's lots of things in media right. that you can look up. We need to do better. We need to do better as elected officials because I know people across Canada particularly as somebody who taught at the University of Winnipeg. I taught uh, Aboriginal education for mm -hmm. many years, teaching about residential school, that even people who don't know, when they know they want to do better. Canadians right. are good. Canadians are good. Canadians, most Canadians, are truly dedicated to reconciling this country, to learning about the truth, to forging a path forward together, uh, to ensure justice. Right. We need to emulate that as elected officials in this country, and unfortunately, I don't see that from all members of Parliament. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. NDP MP Leah Gazan, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate this. Thank you this. so much for having me. Coming up.